Hello, Internet, and all the ships at sea. My name is Alexandra Aaron, and I am playing Rising World. Rising World is a Minecraft-like game with a more realistic aesthetic. Uh, it does away with Minecraft's block-based uh, voxel system and makes a lumpier world. Wow. Uh, that's two whole apples. Okay, great. Um, it's a survival sandbox exploration building game. I have been playing it for a few days now. And uh, I've decided to do a video. I've actually recorded myself playing it quite a bit. But uh, it was just me aimlessly building, explaining how the game is played in some places. But... Uh, this game is in early access. There are limits to how much there is to do, although it's very open-ended. And there's only so much fun you can have uh, watching somebody just playing it under routine situations. So I've decided to set for myself a goal. I have created a brand new world. Uh, this world starts me off on the outskirts of the snowy biomes. You can see the grass changes here from green to the frosted. The plants are all frosted. The trees are dead, and the vegetables have frost on their leaves. It's purely cosmetic, uh, even in the border zone here. In fact, when I first created this world, I had never managed to find the snowy biomes in my main world. So I had never seen dead trees before, these deciduous trees. So the game loads up. And there are these spooky dead trees, and there's an abandoned shack in the distance. And I thought I had found some kind of desolation, some sort of spooky biome. Especially since, at a distance, it's not really necessarily apparent that that grass is frosted and not just dead, if you're not, uh, if you don't know what you're looking at. So my goal here, I'm going to attempt to build myself a home in a winter wonderland. This is going to be a difficult task because, oh, that's nice, got a rake. Uh, the contents of the chest are random. These, oh, while I'm talking, the sun is already setting. I believe the game starts you off at a random time of day. It's kind of rude of it to uh, make the game start this close to sunset. Usually, I would have a shelter prepared by now. Uh, I have been talking, but I also didn't expect the sun to set that fast. So let me explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, base myself in this shack while I gather the materials I will need to build a dream home winter chalet with a self-sustaining garden and water supply in the snowy wood biome. Uh, first thing I've got to do is set myself up a home here. To make a shelter, I need the sticks. I've got wood. I can craft. Some of that wood into lumber and then the lumber into sticks. And now I can make myself a small shelter, which is the uh, cheapest in terms of labor and resources bed item you can make. I'll place it here. Bedding does two things. It lets you skip through the dark period of night until the morning. It also resets your spawn points. That's not terribly important since my spawn point was where you saw me at the start of the video looking at the shack. But uh, I'm planning on using the chest in the shack for storage while I gather my initial supplies. Uh, on this, the first day, I will go a little bit into the snowy biome on a relative straight line heading so I can find my way back. If I happen to die, uh, I will respawn at my spawn point, which is that chest, or rather uh, the, the, that shack where I slept. 
So if I get too terribly lost, I can find my way back. By default, you drop your inventory when you die. You can turn that off in the settings. I have done so. Uh, I would prefer to have a game where there is some penalty for death, but I find that the only option is a little harsher than this one. So there are multiple snowy biomes. I'm crossing the tundra now, which is frozen grasslands. There is also the taiga, which is a frozen forest. And the polar region, which is just blank snow caps. As you can see, it looks like I don't want to veer off because that will. Uh, I might have to to avoid falling here. So that stand of trees there might just be a stand of trees, might be an isolated bit of taiga, but it's the sort of thing that I'm going to be looking for when I want to build my house. The challenge is no food grows in the snowy biomes, uh, unless you're really good at killing moose. There is no standing water and the game does not have the level of realism where you can just melt snow for water. So I'm going to look for a very picturesque place deep in the snowy forest and build a lodge. I want to have a well that I will make uh, with water in it I can drink. And I want to have a food supply growing so I can be self-sustaining. And I want it to be fairly deep, not just here near the edges. Uh, the reason this is challenging is I personally have a terrible sense of direction. Without a compass, I have a very hard time finding a specific place in this game. The landscapes can be quite beautiful. Uh, this area is interesting if desolate. It's not even close to the best example of the landscapes you can get. So if you build a compass, which will be one of the things that I will be doing as part of my resource gathering before I go in to build, to find a place for my home and build it. If you have a compass, it will point not just to true north, but also to the last place that you slept, to your current spawn point. So the compass will uh, let me find my way back to the shack when I first get a compass. And when I move my spawn point to the house, it will let me find my way back there. But there is a moose. Mooses in this game are utterly placid. I think they will fight you back if you attack them. I don't even know if they drop meat, to be honest. I said, unless you're good at killing moose. But uh, this game, pretty much only the domestic type animals that you encounter drop meat. These apple trees... Uh, when they're not dead like this, which is what happens when they're in proximity to a snowy biome, they drop six apples at a time. I did not realize that uh, that when they're leafless, they only do one apple. That is going to complicate things. This is what the potatoes I've been gathering look like when they're not frosty. Uh, I have never played with a snowy biome before. So, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how well growing food is going to go. The fact that the frosted vegetable model exists tells me that it's possible to grow food within them. Same thing with the uh, dead apple trees having one apple. Uh, but I don't know if, for instance, the frosted vegetables take longer to grow. I've also noticed... Here is a tomato plant. I have not seen a tomato plant growing within the frosty biome, uh, within the radius at which the, the plants are frosty. So this could complicate things because tomatoes are one of the better food sources. I will plant potatoes if that's all that grows. I'm prepared to adapt. All right, so I'm going to need several things, wood, is going to be the easy one because there is plenty of wood in the snowy biome. I'm going to need lots of food because I don't know how long it will take my food to grow. 
And once I have uh, started building my winter home, my wintry home, I should say, uh, I don't know. I, I don't plan on leaving the snowy forest while I'm building to go looking for food. I plan on going quite a ways in. I don't want to have to trek back out just to get food while I'm building. So I'm going to want to have a big food supply. All right. So I'm digging. Both collecting rock here. And sort of making a safe way down. This is a naturally generated cave. On the plains, these are one of the only ways you can find rock without digging through the dirt yourself. Uh, I'm going to need quite a bit of stone, so this is useful material I'm gathering. Notice that uh, the little pop-up message is automatically going into my inventory. The little stone chips that are rattling around are purely cosmetic. All right, I have some more wood, so I'm going to make some torches. For that, I need sticks, so, uh, there's one. And then lights. I don't want quite that many torches. Just wanted to see how many I could make. All right, so now I've got a torch. So uh, the cave generating algorithm is not uh, very player friendly at the moment. It generates sheer downward paths about as often and as long as it will do horizontal ones. A lot of cave entrances on the plains are drops like this one. And just in general, it's not very navigable. So I'm not interested in actually going into the cave proper. One of the annoying quality of life things here, and one of the reasons I didn't just convert all of those sticks I made to torches, is you can't just stick a torch on a wall in this game. You have to have a mount for it. The lowest tier mounts, the wooden torch mounts, cannot be reclaimed. You place it, you cannot remove it. You can destroy it, but you never get that wooden torch mount back. So. Uh, as I was saying, I am not going to go into the cave proper yet. I'm just going to chip away at the stone here in the entrance and see if I can find any metal. If I don't get metal, I'm going to need a lot of stone. I need metal because I need... There are three things that are going to be relatively essential for my trek. I need a compass so that I don't get lost, otherwise I don't really dare go too far from my shack. I need a bucket to trek water into the frozen area. And I would like to have a clock. In addition to that, any tools beyond the axe and the pickaxe that you've seen me use, uh, you don't start with those. You don't start with any other tools. I've got a rake. Rakes are useful, but uh, not essential. I would need a sickle in order to harvest and transplant vegetable plants. Take some of those potatoes into the winter wonderland with me. I need a hoe in order to plant them. I'm going to need quite a bit of stone and some wood for making crafting tables. I don't need to harvest wood for building specifically because I'm going to need to clear out trees to make space for my home. I will have plenty of wood. Wood is the one thing that is abundant where I'm going. So I'd hoped I would see some uh, signs of metal before now. That's not a torch, that's an apple. I might have picked the wrong hole to start uh, digging around it. Oh, 
Hold on. That looks like a vein of metal there. So I'm going to start digging in that direction. This game is in an alpha state. It's early access on Steam. There are a lot of quality of life things that uh, you can do without even using console command cheat codes uh, that feel like cheating. For instance, the the uh, torch system is pretty cumbersome. And you can't have a torch in one hand and the pickaxe in the other, for instance. They do have a key on the keyboard. The L key will light up your environment. Uh, it makes your character shed daylight, basically. I basically consider that tantamount to cheating. I don't judge anybody who does it because the game doesn't give you better tools for it. You can't make a mining helmet. You can't have a... Uh, you can't have a mining helmet. You can't have any kind of magic light spell or anything. And you can't just stick torches where you want them to. So... Looked like there was maybe some more copper further down, so I'm just going to make my way down. So I don't judge anybody who uses the L key to create light. That's, that's what it's there for. But I have set a challenge for myself, and I feel like not making use of sort of easy play features like that. Like, I'm already... I already have uh, no consequences for death, so... This this is casual enough for me. Okay, looks like this is... Uh, this cave stops here. So, I thought this was going to go a lot deeper than it did before I got down here and saw... This is one of the really annoying things about placing torch mounts. Sometimes you have to do it in absolute darkness. So, okay. It wasn't that hard to find my way down to the bottom of this cave. I really need iron. I need copper. Copper is a necessary component of the compass and the clock. But you can't do anything with any metal if you do not have an anvil. And an anvil takes quite a bit of iron. I'm not going to pass up this copper. You don't need a lot of copper beyond even just uh It only takes a single ingot of copper to make a compass and a clock, and you have half an ingot left over, to be honest. But it can be a beautiful construction material. And I'm hoping that the home I be build will be aesthetically pleasing. So, all right. So at this point, I have exhausted the visible sources of metal. Time to just start digging. But rather than have to use more torches and torch mounts, I'm going to stay in the light instead of keep digging in that same direction. My first home in my first Rising World world, before I learned many tips and tricks about construction that uh, make it a lot easier to make something useful and pleasing, uh, it was a cave like this where I thought it was a great big tunnel, great big uh, cave network, and it was just a hole in the ground that I widened, uh, dug out mining like this. And I wound up covering it over with stone, with rough, unworked stone, and then building a door into the side of it. 
Later on, I figured out how to do smooth surfaces. I made a, uh, I put a, basically the equivalent of laying a concrete floor in your basement. And then from there, uh, my rough hewn cave with the rough walls and the finished floor became my workshop. I dug out further into the hill that I was in and built a beautiful underground mansion. So it's kind of a like an archaeological dig showing my mastery of construction techniques. Oh, here's some metal. Maybe. Maybe not. I thought it was. This game uses a uh, lumpy voxel technique in comparison to Minecraft. Sometimes, because of that, it looks like there's metal mixed in with the stone, but it's just a, a quirk of the renderer. There's metal near it. But you can destroy a piece of stone that uh, has is showing the streaks and not get anything for it. So I have got hundreds of pieces of stone here, 30 pieces of copper. I'm not seeing any iron. At this point, I'm going to see if I can... I might have to use the pickaxe to enhance my way back up. We'll see. Yep, looks like I'm going to have to dig my way up. So at this point, I'm going to go look for more holes, more caves. They're probably going to be pits like this. I'm probably going to get another hundred stone trying to find my way into them. But sometimes you'll get lucky and right at the surface drink some water, you will find, oh, missed that, more copper. This is what I was talking about. Sometimes you'll find nice little veins of ore just sitting on the surface. Uh, if this were a mountain biome, there would be plenty. This is what a fruit tree looks like. This is cherry tree. They unfortunately never blossom uh, like cherry trees do in real life. You never get the beautiful white flowers. At least not yet. This game is still a you know, work in progress. Take a look at this. This is another cave slash hole. Looks like it might be more extensive. I'm just going to go around the perimeter and see if I spot any metal. Don't see any metal on the surface. Don't see any obvious metal pockets. And quite a lot of places to fall. So I'm going to keep looking on the surface. I think the sun is starting to go down, possibly. We'll see. Here's more fruit tree. So knowing that the trees will only produce one fruit when they grow somewhere that they can't get leaves, I think I'm going to probably not bring apple trees in, which was part of my plan. That's going to slow down my uh, quest a bit because apple trees are uh, pretty abundant around here. Okay, so let's see. Can I find my way back to my little shack? Go ahead and laugh at my lack of sense of direction. There's pigs and cows here. I could kill them for meat. Uh, it takes some planning to do it because it takes multiple blows of your tools to take them down. 
uh, and they will run like the dickens. So basically, it helps to dig a hole. If you notice, it just lets you go up and just pick the wool off of a sheep like it is an item. There's also cotton. Uh, any fiber item, the game does not really distinguish between them. They all make the same generic cloth, which you can use to uh, Okay, so here's, I think, yet another cave cleft. Whoops, that was almost bad. And here's another sheep. And that looks like some carrots. And some tomatoes. Okay, I can tell I'm heading in about the right direction because there's the snowy landscape and the dead trees. So, oh, I see some metal. I see some metal. Yes, I have no sense of direction, and if you have no sense of direction like me, uh, the sort of sameness. Yep, the sun is definitely setting. Okay, where's that metal? This is iron. We have iron. I'm going to need a lot of it to build an anvil, and you can't do much else with metal if you don't have an anvil. Don't think I'm going to get everything I need here. I'm realizing... There's something I forgot to do at my shack. I'm so used to playing with a compass. Uh, I meant to put... I meant to hang a torch on it. That makes it easy to find in the dark. And even in the sunlight, it will stick out from quite a long ways. Uh-oh. That's a polar bear. And it is after me. Well, if it kills me, I will find my way home very easily. Because I will respawn. There is water. I'm running past a lot of potatoes and things. The polar bear may or may not be after me still. There is a majestic moose. So let's, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to find my way back home before it's dark. Maybe I should have just let that polar bear eat me. Oh, and I circled back around to it. So maybe that will happen. So, I'm grabbing all the food I can because food does not rot, and it does grow back. And again, I want to have a whole lot of food when I move into the woods. And more polar bears. Or maybe the same one. Did I go around in a circle again? Okay. Yep, I think I am well and truly lost. That's not a torch, that's a torch. Okay, I've seen that sheep before because it doesn't have wool on. So, uh, yes, if you're wondering why my challenge is so challenging, this is part of it. There are, uh, things you can do to mark your path in the game. One of them is to, uh, use the rake 
to the rake will uh, remove plants and expose bare dirt. You can use that to make a dirt path. I might have done that. You can leave little cairns of stone. You can place torches on mounts and uh, do that. I did not do any of these things. I did not think I was going to be quite far enough away from my shack to warrant it. Uh, but again, I got a little cocky because I'm used to playing with the compass. All right. Oh, there's some cherries. So at least I'm picking up food as I go. All right. So logically, it's going to be raining. Logically, I'm looking for a place along the border of regular and snowy. So I'll head towards the snowy trees. Even though this is where I have to worry about polar bears. I may just end up uh, doing this all game night, apparently. Another thing I might have done is take notice of where the sun set the first night. Which direction was west. Well, at least I'm getting a lot of uh, those potatoes. So you're getting a great potato picking sim action here. So I was digging out iron, I can't tell. No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. So I'm just going to keep following the border. Between snow and not snow. This does not look like... So I'll turn around and go the other way. And I'm running out of... I'm getting hungry, so we'll do that. The good news is there's no penalty for missed sleep. And uh, the period of darkness is shorter than the period of light. Oh, why did I run from those polar bears? They could have sent me home, Little Prince style. I could also jump into one of those holes, but that's risky. Because if you don't die in a fall, you could break your leg, which makes it impossible to run or jump, which would just make my plight harder and uh, makes it harder to fall. Further. The game is very good about automatically following slopes when you're walking unless you jump. It's not auto not not perfect. You can still take falling damage uh, going down a mountain. But it's very good about tracking your movements to an irregular surface rather than giving you falling damage every time. Okay, so my home was not up on a hill. My shack was in a valley. Oh, that's a polar bear. I'm just gonna... Yeah, take the express, polar bear express home. It says game over. 
but it's not. Okay, so now I am back in my shack, being rendered around me. Okay, so, uh, here's my tent. And we'll just skip to morning. Okay, so let's, uh, drop some of our supplies off here. Get some, get rid of the full stacks of things. Uh, the pumpkin is also a full stack, actually. That's also a full stack of wool. Okay. So it's foggy this morning. That's going to complicate things. Oh. So I'm going to... Gonna stick a torch on there, and then I'm gonna head off in this direction, which uh, I'm going towards the rising sun, which means when the sun sets, if I head back towards the uh, setting sun, I should be heading back towards my house. Looks like there's uh, hills in this direction. Don't know why I'm running with my torch out. Uh, I might find some better rocky outcroppings there that aren't just vertical pits. It's possible. We'll see. Maybe this is why I couldn't find my way home. There's snow on both sides. Well, that's interesting. I haven't found any snow in my primary rising world world. Oh, I don't know why I'm continuing to head into the snow. I haven't found any snow, and uh, apparently uh, this valley of green is surrounded. Okay, so I'm going to keep going back this way until I see my torch, just to make sure that I have not completely lost my bearings. That's, that's a pool of water. So yes, that's probably got something to do with why I couldn't find my way home. Okay, and there it is. Yes, you have a built-in zoom here. You can see a torch even during the day from quite a ways away. Very useful. Uh, notice it, it does pop in. Uh, if you have a newer computer, more powerful computer, you can probably increase the render distance compared to what I'm playing at. Ooh, in which case that torch would be even more useful. Okay, so my plan to go straight east did not pan out. This is uh, getting taking another risk with my sense of direction, but. It's still pretty early in the day. I'm just saying if there's a direction in which I can go where I won't just uh, encounter more snow. So 
So far the vegetables in this direction are unfrosted. You cannot collect rainwater, but uh, just being out and about in the rain suspends your thirst and slowly refills your thirst meter. Food in this game outside of the frozen areas is very, very easy to find if you can't tell. Tomatoes are just popping up everywhere. Okay, so... Still not getting snow in this direction. Lots of tomatoes. I'm just not finding the rocky outcroppings that I need to mine. That's, uh, honestly, this is, uh, might end up being the hardest part of my plan. Okay. Well, I know closer back to where my home base is. I did pass several rocky holes in the ground, including the one I was digging in that I gave up on. So I'm going to just head back and try to get one of them. Uh, my whole purpose in going so far afield was looking for easier pickings. But if there aren't any, if I have to trek all day to find another better source of stone, then it's not actually easier. So. Even when this game is very much not going my way, I find it very, very soothing to play it. The pumpkin. You can't eat pumpkins. You can make lights out of them. Uh, I think of this as basically an interactive three-dimensional Bob Ross landscape. That's honestly... Okay, here's some stone. Here's some stone. This is one of the scary holes. Nevertheless. I'm going to be careful not to dig too closely directly underneath myself. trying to dig myself a path I can follow back up. I could always build a ramp by placing stone that I have previously mined in addition to cutting my way down, but uh, I want to have a lot of stone as a building material. It takes hundreds of pieces of stone to make the smelting iron, uh, the smelting oven where you can smelt your stone, uh, excuse me, smelt your metal refine it into usable form and uh, they are not mobile so I'm gonna have to make at least two of them one in my temporary home base and one in my permanent home so in addition to any actual building I want to do with stone I'm gonna need a few hundred pieces all right so uh, I had an oversight here. I do not have any wood in my inventory, and I have no torch mounts. So I'm going to very quickly chop down a tree. Now... There's something I do if I'm very close to my home. I leave the stump early on when I don't have a compass. That way if I see a tree is missing, I know that I'm near home. This is not quite uh, near enough for that. 
All right, so I now have some wood. Oh, I already had sticks in my inventory. I was mistaken. I didn't have any raw wood, but I did have leftover sticks. Okay. So let's uh, place torch mount. Get the torch in there. So, this is the kind of natural cave system that I thought I was looking at in that first hole I started digging in. As you can see, it's very, very precipitous falls. Uh, not very easy to explore. I feel like they will either have to refine their cave generation algorithm quite a bit as the game progresses, or give us some sort of climbing gear, grappling hooks, things like that, because... Uh, Uh, it's not a big vein, at least not on the surface. But uh, that's some metal. This is iron. Both iron and copper are reddish. So I don't like to uh, proclaim what I'm looking at before I get there. So, let's see. But yes, this is iron. How much of the iron do I have? 14 so far. It takes 24 pieces of iron to make an anvil, which you need to make anything else out of metal. And then I'm going to need several pieces of iron. Uh, one each for the bucket the compass, and the clock that I plan on making. One to make a hoe for farming and a sickle for collecting plants. So I'm going to need at least 29 pieces of iron. If I choose to make a battle axe or sword and a sledgehammer, that will be more iron. I don't necessarily need those before I start my uh, quest for my house. I could probably do this a little more efficiently if I would put a light in down here, but I don't honestly care if I'm collecting stone with the iron because I need them both. So let's uh, take a look at what... Ooh! Okay, I am going to go ahead and uh, place a torch mount. Because there's even more iron than I thought there was. I think I'm going to be... I think this is going to take care of my iron needs, to be honest. So yes, this is uh didn't look like much when I was standing on top of it. But I think this is going to take care of my basic iron needs, which is good because I don't know how interesting it would have been watching me uh digging and digging and digging fruitlessly in stone or going around in circles trying to find stone with visible iron. I think that would probably have a very, very limited half-life in terms of interest. And there's still more. I 
I might have to cut myself steps back out of this hole. Oh, I've journeyed into a copper vein that was overlapping the iron. This is uh, really a bonanza here. Again, the number of things I really need copper for, uh, half a piece of copper covers my basic needs, but you can make some lovely uh, construction pieces out of it. I think I'm definitely going to have my stone needs taken care of by the time I'm done carving out these two veins. And then some. So, yes, I have a full stack of iron. And then some. I have 75 pieces of iron. That's probably enough to make every tool in the game. And there's still a little bit more. All right. That seems to destroy the copper. Looks like uh, I got the iron. Okay. So now I'm going to... Oh! Majestic cave sheep, I think. Yep. Majestic cave sheep. Alright, so... Uh, I don't believe they've implemented mutton in the game yet. I think it's, uh, I think the only types of meat they have is cows will give you steak. Chickens will give you chicken meat. And I tell you, I hear chickens a lot in this game, but I rarely see them. And pigs can give you bacon or ribs or maybe sometimes both. Okay, I hope I'm going the right direction. Pretty sure that I am. Ish. Oh, you know, I, I was talking about how I don't need to uh, pick up a lot of wood. I would have been cutting down trees if I had been gathering wood. In which case, I would have my telltale I was telling you about, where... Okay, this is looking familiar. Maybe. But I'd have my telltale I was talking about. Okay, my house was not off in the icy weeds. Ooh. Of uh, trees cut down. Maybe I should have just stuck torches on every side of my cabin. I definitely need to start doing more trailblazing. You know what it is, is I'm not used to uh, talking while I'm exploring. Throws me off. Routine maintenance things I would normally be doing as I go. That's okay. I'm gathering food. Which is useful. Like I said, I'm going to need plenty of it. Uh, once I get my tools, I'm going to stop eating, not eating, I'm going to stop harvesting every vegetable plant I go past. I'm going to start cutting some of them down. Okay. 
majestic nurses. Giant gaping rock clefts. Yeah, leaving a trail of tree stumps to follow would have been smart, whether I strictly needed the wood or not. Okay, so thank you for watching. I get lost repeatedly. I'm going to ask this guy if he knows the way back to my house. I think he does. So I turn left, then right, then left. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit more wood than I have now. And in the process, it'll mark my house with tree stumps. When a tree drops a sapling, you can use that to uh, replant the tree. They will drop between zero and two saplings usually. I'm going to see if I can get an apple sapling from this. I know I said I'm not going to bother with fruit trees. I'm just curious. In the uh, warmer biomes, fruit trees almost always drop a sapling if they're fruiting. Doesn't look like this one did, so. Still got wood for it. And let's go ahead. Might lose an apple from this, but uh, it's just one apple. Yep, so maybe they don't even drop saplings in the snowy biome, which, uh, which sharply limit the usefulness of transplanting them. So I'm certainly going to have my work cut out for me making a sustainable food supply. I'm going to have to stick to vegetables. So take potato and the sun is setting. I'm still going to, uh, all right, like a lot of these uh, survival sandbox games, you have to build a work station uh, in order to progress. Take 16 pieces of lumber, I think it said. So I'm going to do that. I will go ahead and place my craft bench before I go to bed. Notice that it doesn't care that it is uh, intersecting that beam there. I'm going to go to sleep. Okay, so it's a brand new day. I can make 
other crafting stations with this. The block bench lets you make Minecraft style square building blocks, which is how I would make a nice, neat, uh, straight floor like this shack has. I didn't realize that the block bench was available in my first game, so my early construction attempts were disasters. The saw bench lets you make things, boards, beams, furniture, chests, crates. The anvil I definitely need. Now the smelting furnace. Well, I have li oh, I put some of my stone in my t in my chest. Okay, the smelting furnace is how you refine metal. Once it's in place, it cannot be removed, only destroyed. The other crafting stations don't have that flaw. So I'm just going to start with a small one. I do need some lumber to get it going. So let me uh, do that. Make a small smelting furnace. Not the usual way I come in. So you don't need a flat surface to place the smelting furnace or any other uh, crafting station on. I like it to be reasonably flat. Oh, let me uh make sure that this is going to be okay. There's two sides of the smelting furnace you need to be accessible. There's the fuel chute, and the that is iron. Uh, there's the fuel chute, and there's the ingots. This is not a crafting station that uses the crafting interface. This is uh, a real-time interface. stick ingots in, a stick rather, or in, you fire the furnace, and in a few minutes they melt into ingots. Now, I didn't find any coal while I was out. I'm not sure if I can stick logs in. Doesn't seem like it. I guess I gotta make more lumber. Okay, so each piece of lumber makes five. I think each metal has its own melting point, which is represented by how long it takes to uh, do it. I've never done a detailed study of it. The highest I've ever found is six minutes, which takes 72 pieces of fuel. So a little wasteful, but I'll just put in 75. If you want to see what it looks like, from well, it's going... So it's blazing. I am going to uh, find the straightest, nearest run to a stone chasm that I can. Is that stone up there? Or is that just the leading edge of the... Oh! It's not even a chasm. There's stone right here. I just used 128 stone to make that furnace. I'm not going to get that stone back. So might as well start digging here for some more, just to pass the time. Notice I'm getting thirsty. One of the reasons I consider tomatoes to be a superfood is they're very easy to spot. You get uh, multiple of them from a plant, and they give you back water as well as food. So, very, very useful. All 
I did not know that mud was an item type. Well, that's interesting. Oh, and is this the uh, first hole that I was digging around in? Let's go take a look. Nope, that is not. All right. So this is pretty easy to find the shack back from. Uh, let's see if we can take ourselves an approach. If I can find some coal, that will be preferable to uh, continuing to throw wood in the furnace. Just because coal is so much more compact and it doesn't have other uses like wood does. I am planning on living in a forest, so eventually the coal's gonna be no big deal, but We do want to try to optimize our resource to some extent. So the first batch of iron that I am baking is going to go entirely to making the anvil. Then I'm going to uh, refine a little bit of copper and the uh, another batch of iron. I'm going to use that to make the sickle is going to be my highest priority because I really need to be gathering plant seedlings. Which, if you take a sickle and you hit a vegetable plant, you'll get seedlings from it. Sometimes you'll get two or three of them. I believe your seedling uh, luck improves when you're Harvesting a plant that's in bloom that has not been harvested. Oh, and the sun came out while well, I'm digging around down here. It's hard to say, but there might be something there, some mineral. Let me go ahead and uh, plant a torch. Nope, just stone little shadow on the rock. I thought I might have found a coal seam. My second Rising World world that I started building in, uh, it spawned me in the foothills of mountains. And there is so much exposed mineral wealth just sort of poking out of the stone. Coal and iron and copper everywhere, but also aluminum and tungsten. Which on my first game, I had to dig quite a bit to find. Aluminum doesn't have very many uses in the game. Tungsten is used to make modern electric lights. This game has a very uh, inconsistent technology level. You might have noticed... I think there might have been a gramophone record in my uh, chest in the shack. I'm not sure on that. I've opened so many and I was not interested in items I can't immediately use when I was looking at it. But gramophone records can be found in the ruins of, this, of the shacks. You can build a, a hand crank Victrola to play them. And... Uh, you can also build modern electric lights and very modern looking porcelain plumbing fixtures. There's not really other technology except for one sort of super science-y uh, science fiction ore detector you can make. So I'm not finding much of interest in here. I'm not grabbing those potatoes that I'm seeing because I'm very close to having a sickle. And then 
I'm just gonna harvest all those potatoes. Okay, let's take a look at how our furnace is doing. And we have ingots. You don't have to wait for them to cool. The game also has a very, very mixed uh, realism level. I really wish there was a empty all or get all. It can be very finicky to load a... Uh, I'm going to put... I only need one piece of copper. Uh, does it, yeah, having a solid flat floor underneath this makes it so much easier to position the cursor to fill each slot. My first game, my first furnace, was on a stone cave floor that I hollowed out that I made as flat as I could with a pickaxe and sledgehammer, which was not very flat. All of my crafting surfaces were all tilted and drunk, which didn't matter for most of them, but it made the furnace very tricky to use. Okay, so that took uh, only about 40 of the fuel that I had in there. So I don't think copper is going to take any longer. So this should be sufficient. And at this point, I'm going to call uh, call the video good. We'll break this off for now. Uh, I might let the furnace finish cycling without it being recorded. But uh, I don't want to do anything right now except for get crafting on the metal. So uh, I'll pick up this recording later, uh, show you how the anvil works, and make my tools. At which point I will be very close to being ready to set out for the snowy wilderness. Thank you for watching. I'm Alexandra Aaron, and I am playing Rising World.